First, unhook our hose real quick. And probably, I can feel the end of, of this um, nipple. It's about right there. You know, so if we're down there, cut it like right here. Yeah, we'll cut it right in the middle and then we can always just cock this off to the side if we need to. There we are. So probably easier to just start with this side here. Now the instructions online, um, I'm not affiliated, but I get all this from Drip Depot. So far it's been a good system for me. Um, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna unscrew this nut right here and it's reverse thread. I don't know if you can see that, that thread right there. And they suggest if you have trouble getting this over the barb, you could dip this in a um, cup of like lukewarm water to soften it up but I really haven't had any issues so you just get that on there you know, but you start with these all the way in like that and then you can reverse this out my bad sorry about that so you bring this out and then it tightens everything against here all right so we got that, and probably what we'll do is kind of cant things like that, maybe? Yeah, that should be fine, and then we'll just take this and kind of spin it a little. It's just a garden, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we got that on. You can see that it slipped over the barb right here. I'm gonna reverse thread that, tighten that up. And most of this is just hand tight, guys. You don't want to put a wrench on it and crack a fitting. So we got that. I'm just going to spin this a little bit. Like that to accept our hose easier. Like that. That'll be there. And then we're going to put our tubing on. Now this is going to be what goes to our uh, drip irrigation. All right, so we got that on. And again, we're just gonna reverse thread this. All right, so we're in like that. We'll get our hose connected. Just like that. And then we're gonna just tack this up along here a couple times. All right, so we got that tacked in. We're running across our board right here. And we jog over here. I'm gonna have to figure out something to kind of hold this down for now. I could probably just use my weeding bucket for now. So 
something like that. We've got our poly just running along the house over here. <clears throat> and then once we get over here, we're gonna just tack it up right here and basically make a manifold. And then one more clip. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so next we need to use what's called a dummy plug. So this is gonna end up going, at the end of here, this is gonna what dams up the water pressure. So our poly is gonna come in this end right here. And this is just a cap on the end right here. It screws off if you wanted to blow the line out or something. You know, straight through. So this is our dummy plug. So let's go ahead and throw that in. Man, is it hot out right now, guys? Hot and humid. We're in upstate New York here. I think it said it was supposed to get to 80, 87 today, but man, feels a bit more than 87. So same gig, we're gonna take this. Yeah. We're gonna take this, shove it in the end of this, tighten it down. And then we're just gonna tighten that nut up. All right, just like that. Now next, we get to throw in our barbs for our actual drip line. So this hasn't taken too long, guys. It's probably taken me more time to talk, talk you through it than actually install it. So this was one of the cheapest kits you could buy. I think it was like 80 something bucks. They give you this little piercing tool to throw in the barbs so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this jab a hole in here and then they have these couplings you see right here and we're going to throw that in the big line and then we're going to attach our drip tubing to it and we have dummy plugs for this and that's how that goes on so we're going to do four total we have 40 plants um, they say you don't want to run this more than 30 feet per run and it's 12 inch spacing so we're going to do four rows of 10 basically so let's grab four cu uh, couplings all right so we got our four couplings in our piercing tube and let's just go through and make our holes we'll start with our first one right here uh, right close to the house so you're going to take it make sure you're straight from where you want to throw everything in so twist it a little bit just like that oh we got a little friend down in here a little gardener snake I don't know if you can see him at all he was slithering around so we got our first hole sorry I'm doing an awful job of filming this guys first hole in we're gonna take 
our coupling right here and I'm just gonna pop it in you heard it snap that's good so we're gonna do our next one we're gonna come here about a foot down we're gonna do the same thing And then our last one. All right, those are all in. Now we're gonna basically count out uh, probably 11 emitters per line mainly because we're going to have some distance before it gets down to the first pot so let's do that we'll count out 11. now we got our four equal length tube uh, emitter tubes and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw a, a dummy plug into each of uh, every one of these so those for the small ones look just like that We'll take four of these off and just plug up the ends of them. They're the same as everything else here. You just push them in, they hold fine. Alright, so first one. And I believe it said, yeah, you take the smaller end and throw it in. So you just throw that in like that. First one done. This isn't hard, guys. You know, it's pretty easy to set up. Throw that in. I think I'll clean that up with my knife a little bit. All right, so we got a cleaner cut there. Throw that one in. And finally, our last one, we throw that in. All right, so all of our dummy plugs are in, and now all we gotta do is take the other lines of these and throw them in the couplings we already threw in here. All right, so first one going on. Like I said, just push it on just like the rest of these guys. This will probably keep coiling up. We're gonna have to take something at the end of this to kind of stake it and tie it off so it doesn't keep recoiling. But this is essentially the plan, guys. We got four of these that are gonna come out just like this. I've got some like driveway uh, plow sticks I could probably use for the time being. I just want something temporary because we're still gonna come through here and rototill this and clean it up. So nothing groundbreaking, guys. Um, we got all four lines laid out here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and bring the plants over. We'll space them all on here. And we'll bring you back when that's done. And we're done, guys. So it didn't take me too long. Most of the time was just spent just bringing the plants over here. Um, I've got this going through a test run right now. Everything's dripping fine. Let me take in and show you. So these are all half gallon an hour emitters everything's dripping pretty much right on the roots um the only thing i don't really know is i couldn't find a whole lot of um information on how long like nursery pots like this if they're on drip irrigation should be watered for um and i know it's going to depend on climate how hot it is out this stuff is you know pretty freely draining you can see it's already coming out the bottom and I've only had this run in about a minute or, you know two or three minutes so and probably the arbor vitae is going to require have different requirements than the hydrangeas but um, for the most part what I do know is that you don't want them so wet that they start rotting but you don't want them dry so that they die so it's probably gonna be a little bit of an experiment um, with these half gallon emitters in my garden bed over there, um, we have it running in the morning for, I think, 110 minutes. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be too much for the nursery pot, so I'll check these in the morning, you know, and, and see how much they dry out during the day. Um, I do know that hydrangeas do particularly well on drip irrigation because they're prone to, uh, certain diseases. So if you're overhead watering, a lot of times you can 
kick up stuff from the soil up onto the leaves and you can have some issues. But um, I think the only thing I might do is, you know, order the parts so that I can set this up on its own zone. You know, I have a four zone uh, controller over there. But so far, everything's looking pretty good. All the hydrangeas, except for the one we lost, look like they're already starting to put on new growth. Um, next week, uh, next week, what we'll do is we'll have those uh, garden beds set up for mist irrigation. Um, I probably won't video me potting up the rhododendrons um, or moving the things over, but I'll definitely video setting up the mist system. And we'll definitely video taking cuttings from the hydrangeas and pruning them so i think that's all i got for you guys today if any of you do know if you have an idea of you know if i'm running these half gallon hour emitters um i'm in a zone 5a you know what what's a good time period to set these up to run um i haven't found a whole lot of information on it but if uh someone watching this does know you know drop them down in the comments below so until next time guys we'll see you bye